Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host, Gail. And today we're going to discuss the beginning of relationships, serious relationships that go to the next level. Meaning moving in together, probably getting engaged with the idea of getting married. And like what preparation do you really need to have going into this? I feel like most of my friends who are in this phase, they're kind of just going in cold turkey. But I feel like you got a little bit more guidance. Well, I have to tell you, it's interesting. I was thinking about this when you mentioned it the other day. We actually, in school, learned how to have home ec, and we had we learned how to sew, we learned how to iron. It sounds crazy. And the guys did it, and the girls did it. And then the second half of our semester, we would all take shop, and we would learn how to do electrical th- gadgets and, and plumbing uh, projects. And it was, sounds so things crazy. that actually make sense for your life versus, like, the Pythagorean theory theorem or like who the Mongolian Empire King was and <laughs> well when I was going to high school it was a two-tier system anyway a lot of kids didn't go to college they they did right. went to vocational schools and they they really were very talented there some became carpenters electricians mm-hmm. uh, whatever I mean not everybody had to go to college now it's very different and so you have to look at it differently but I, th- I have a feeling that most young women in their 20s don't know how to sew. I have no clue how to sew. We used to have to make a dress. That was graduation. No way. Yes, and the guys had to make a shirt. But have you ever had to actually sew in life? Absolutely. I sewed my children. mean if a button falls off of something? Or a hem on a skirt or a hem on a pair of pants for my son or, I mean, absolutely. Here's the thing though. It's like, yes, those are good things to know, especially to take care of your family, but also can't you always just take it to like a, you know, cleaner? Well, that's that's really a big city approach. Not everybody lives where the tailor is around the corner and not everybody wants to pay for it. uh, Correct. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it's important for people to have life skills like that. And certainly to learn how to cook and make a meal doesn't have to be elaborate, but how to measure. I have a question. If you were dating someone and you were like, I'm a really bad cook or really or I oh yeah I have no idea how to clean like I hired a cleaning lady like if you said something like that would they be like she won't make a good wife well I would tend to think that that's pretty pathetic (laughs) I think I I think people have to make an attempt to try to do everything especially if you're moving in together but some people just aren't good cooks so then the other partner will cook and then that you clean I mean it has to be a dividing of responsibilities anyway but in the 1950s and you're a housewife and you're like oh I'm not going to do the cooking you can do the cooking that's not happening when a guy is going to work all day and then coming home like you have to that first of all that was no such conversation as that if if it was it was never being divided no we no we didn't divide responsibility when I got married because my husband went out he made a living and I was expected to take care of the home right so what were the expectations actually the expectations were were to prepare your home to be a, a place where two people enjoyed living. The shopping was all done basically by the wife the uh, grocery or, the, or the person or the person who was home. It doesn't mean that the woman didn't go out. There were women lawyers whose husbands took a back seat and right. stayed home and did but work from home. But the norm was more the The norm other. was in more in the, in the 60s and the 50s that the woman was basically the homemaker. And if she did work, she worked from home. Mm-hmm. Um, two, two people did not go to the workforce because it just didn't didn't happen that day and uh, unless you were very very lucky or unless you both were professionals see it was a different if you were both lawyers both doctors then you had to have some kind of support from outside help but for the most part most of my, my friends all stayed home had mm-hmm. children right away that was part of so what- the expectations were cooking cleaning making a, ironing making, yeah what making- about like be- looking good when they got home like could you be in sweatpants the well, work. there was no such thing as sweat. I don't think there were sweatpants. I think <laughs> no, actually, I think there were palazzo pants. Right. They were, but most people in, in those days wore wore pretty little dresses or skirts or uh, mo- uh, some of the girls wore trousers. But it mm-hmm. was really it was more of a uh, a feminine look in that. In, right. In but that it wasn't. Period. You don't think it was as much because it was like you have to look good for my husband when he comes home. It was just more naturally like you were already wearing that. I think girls were expected to, women were expected, not girls, women were expected to have have a certain feminine mystique, and we wanted to do it. Uh, we wanted to do it for our husbands. We wanted to do it, most of us wanted to do it for ourselves and uh-huh. our friends. 
Right. There was a lot of in- a conversation between girls in those days. Don't forget, we used to have lunches. Uh, mm-hmm. It was much more social for the women than for the poor men who had to go to work at 7 o'clock and didn't come home till 6 o'clock. They really actually had a harder time of it than the women in, in the 50s and 60s. Well, but you still, like, it was a big job to take care of the home and eventually take care of your children, too. I don't think that's less of a job than an office job. I think it was more of a job. It right, so then how did they job. have it easier? Well, they had it easier in the beginning, or they didn't have to face um, the hardships of, uh, of a co-worker saying you're not up to par or any of that thing. It was really, uh, it, it was all done at home. Some of my friends- right, only, your boss essentially was your husband. Like that was the only person who no, was giving your- the boss your was t- yourself. I, I, no, but I, I'm saying the only person who was reviewing your work at the end of the day- was, was yeah your husband but but most men were not such male chauvinists right I mean, I, I mean maybe they were some were or I mean I mean they were but there was a definite um distinction of roles mm-hmm. the home was considered the woman's job for the most part and the bringing home the the bacon was the men's and uh and the roles fit now in the 70s when there was the feminine mystique and all of a yeah. sudden you had a revolution everything changed and a lot of women left the home when went out to work they had to have if they had children they had to have uh people at home to help them some kind of part-time workers or nannies of some sort um it became a whole different thing and it became a very big uh, moment of dissension uh between the women who did not work and the those to uh, those who worked so um there was there was a definite conflict but most people who chose to do this really enjoyed it um, they wouldn't have done it if they didn't enjoy it they would have said forget it i'm not doing it so if we were going to do a training course of Housewife 101 or like what would make a good wife 101, what advice would you give? Firstly, I, I, I don't think there's any one course. Everybody's relationship is different. I think it's what you feel comfortable with. Some women love to create beautiful uh, surroundings in their homes. Some, some women uh, want to be out in the workforce. Uh, it really, I think now in today's world, it's very much a partnership. You make up your decisions together, whether you both are working If one is working and one is going to stay home, if one is going to do a part-time kind of career, I think that's all up to the uh, two people that are going into the relationship. But they better know before they get married and have children what that relationship is going to really be because nothing gets better uh, afterwards. It's always the same. So you have to sort of carve out your roles right from the start. And listen, sometimes uh, I, I must honestly say I did all the housework, I did all the things at home, but I never took out the garbage. So that was the one thing my husband did, and he was fine with it. Uh, so I, I think you have to know what your limits are. Who's going to handle the, the budgets? Mm-hmm. Who's going to, where is your... Um, where is your money being pulled into? Do you have a joint account? Do you have a separate account? Um, how, who's going to pay the bills? So is this like the how to divide our responsibilities conversation? It needs to be a conversation. You can't just oh. wing it. Oh, I, th- I think it's a very important conversation that people do before they move in one iota together. I wouldn't, in, uh, it has to be down pat. What now? Of course, it's not written in blood. All of a sudden, somebody might say, you know what? I enjoy cooking. I'll do the dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Tuesday and Thursday, you do it. Monday, Wednesday, uh, uh, let your partner do it. I think all that's, that's, uh, you know, that's negotiable. And it should be fun. And a lot of times, couples love to cook together. I think more and more people Mm -hmm. enjoy making a meal together and, and doing all that. But somebody has to go to the market. Even if Fresh Direct delivers, somebody has to do the planning for it. So I think those things have to be discussed. It doesn't have to be uh, something that has to always be the same person, but pretty much roles are taken on pretty early in a relationship. And so take me through a day then. Like, let's say maybe in your time, like you wake up in the morning, like who's making breakfast? Okay. Well, as far as back as the Stone Ages, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we would get up and make breakfast and eat together. Now, I was lucky because my husband doesn't eat breakfast. So I would make juice, 
But what, now fresh he eats juice. breakfast. I see him every morning. He has two biscottis and a bowl of Cheerios. Also, by the way, I meant to tell you, you can't eat two cookies for breakfast. <laughs> well, he likes his biscottis. That's like having Oreos for breakfast. He likes it, so leave him alone. He's enjoying I it. I haven't said He's anything reti- to him. I'm saying something to you, so then you'll say something to him. No, I don't say that. That's how we're married 57 years. If he wants to eat two biscottis for breakfast, then he eats them for breakfast. It's not hurting anybody. Right. Um, the truth is, I, I think uh, when you're first together, I think it's nice to get up together, unless you have crazy, one works on a Wait, different schedule. so like, schedule. what if, so I'm not working and I don't have kids, I can't wake up at 11? No, you can't. First of all, if you're not working and you don't have kids, there's something wrong with you. No, you should be working. No, what if my husband's working? Well, you should be working too. You should be just you know, then go out and, and help some. Yeah. yeah, go feed some people in the in the fee, in the food well, bank. What did you do for your first year of marriage then? I taught in a school. You with did? The, I certainly did on on 68th and First Avenue. I taught remedial reading. I also before I took an interior design course because I I sort of liked it. And I before I was decorating my apartment, I figured that would be a very good thing to learn. Right. Um. So I taught in a school three days a week and then I would take a course a couple of days I took an art class but oh, that was very acceptable then and then I got pregnant right away so uh, within a year I was having a child so it was very different that was what the stages of marriage were in the early I guess 60s mom worked too yes she between did. Well, she did a little. Kids. She did a little creative uh, basket, baby basket. I wish we were still in that business because the, with the internet and everything exploding, we would have made a fortune. Yeah. But she had a company called Baby Wishes, and she was very good at it. And it was a high end uh, personal delivery service where she sent gifts to newborns. And so it was the great. only reason you stop working is to have kids. Well, I, I never really worked. I uh, worked, so I don't right, know. Right, I guess it was but, more like... But I enjoyed yeah. staying home and taking care of my own children. And I think the first five years of, of a young child's life is the most important. And I was lucky enough to have a husband who could provide for me um, a lifestyle that I didn't have to have a second income. Correct. And that was fine. I mean, you know, if I didn't have enough, I would have had to go out and do mm-hmm. something to, to bring in some extra money as well. Right. Okay, so you're waking up, you're having breakfast together. But Oh, but he, he didn't have breakfast. Well, then, he had a slight breakfast. He would have juice. Okay, but you didn't have to, like, cook a whole thing. No, no. I, I, Even neither, if, I, neither I mean, one of us really ate breakfast. Right, eggs or, or cereal or whatever We'd it is. We'd have a piece of toast and, and you go to work. talk that early in the morning? Yeah, we sort of talked. And, well, Poppy is a very good early person. True. He's, he's up at like four a.m. No, he's he's up early, so he likes to he likes to have a conversation in the a.m. I don't know. We would discuss what we were going to do for the day. He would go off to the office. He would sometimes say, "What are you doing?" I would tell him my plans. Usually, I mean, it was centered around going to the park and pushing a baby carriage. So it really wasn't very. Right. It wasn't. Uh, but I would, I would meet up with another girlfriend who also had a child, and we mm-hmm. would go to push the carriages to the park, and uh, we had a life. We'd go home and feed the children. It was. That was our routine. Uh, I just feel like most people, I mean, I've never lived, I guess, with a boyfriend, but I feel like when we wake up, I wouldn't have a whole conversation. I think people like you get up, you go straight to the gym and then, but if you can get it in before work or you go straight to work. Well, hopefully you give somebody a kiss in the morning and, and, and uh, before they Yeah, but I don't gym. know if it's like we're sitting down having a how is, how, what do you have planned today conversation? Well, you don't know. You haven't done it yet. True. I just feel like my friends who are, or like even in college, if you are staying over a night with your boyfriend the next day, you're not really doing it. But that's but I guess different. College, that's different. Like, but that's also going... different. You're not really living day to day with somebody. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's a sleepover. Yeah, which we know how I feel about those. We right. did that in an episode. I know, I know that. You said something before about, you know, financially figuring out, are you going to keep your funds separate? Like what the situation is? What was the norm for? Well, the norm for me was you. since neither my husband or I had had any money, it didn't matter. We pulled his money and I spent it. So, I mean, there <laughs> was no conversation and I'm still spending it. So, um, it, it, it's, it's you know, it was very different because I didn't work. So, uh, it, he made enough money that we could live very nicely ourselves. But we allocated how much we were going to spend for, the, for child care, mm-hmm. for going to nursery school, for uh 
certainly going on a little vacation, which we always did. I found that when we were younger, somehow my parents used to babysit for my, my two kids, and we were always going on trips. I still can't figure out why now, when we're 80 years old, we can't go on a trip because we're too tired, I guess. But, I mean, there was were all things that we figured out together. And as our lives progressed from each uh, from our 20s to our 30s and to our early 40s, we, we did different things, but it was, we had to appropriate the funds. We couldn't spend it all on going, uh, sending somebody to private school. We had to have enough that we knew we could eat dinner. We mm-hmm. knew we could, um, if one of us got sick, there was enough money in the in our savings account that would cover everything. Yeah, I think people now, that people will have, you know, their two separate accounts and also a joint account, that, Which I think is very good. That they can, you know, both contribute to and that they'll use to, you know, pay shared bills, things like that. Correct. And um, I think the idea is to do, like, if they were to get divorced and, like, the woman, for instance, let's say if she was making less, then she'll never be so dependent on that one man. She'll always have her own money because she kept her own bank account, so she has that protection and security. I think that's very important even for people in their 80s and 70s. They Everybody should have their own little account for themselves. That's it's a very important thing, especially for women, because women, as they get older, become more dependent on having money in the bank. I'm kind of interested in the going to the park and pushing your stroller with your friend. Like, were you a lady who lunched? You're yes. now you're a lady who lunched. I lady for I, we were ladies for lunching, even with, with our baby carriages. We used to put our carriages outside. If I tell you this, we would get arrested today. But in you na- left the baby in 1960. Five, I put the baby carriage outside with my girlfriend at a coffee shop in our building on 72nd Street, which is no, the building is still there, but the coffee shop is long gone. And we would put the carriages right in the front where the window were, was, and we would sit out there no. and we'd eat lunch. No. And nobody said a you word. You left the baby. We left the baby in the carriages. It was, well, that was a different time. That's so, that's the most 50s thing I've ever, that was like, remember in Marvel's Mrs. 50s, Maisel, was she was her, like, where's the baby? It was in the car. <laughs> well, that's no, this was the early 60s. Oh. You know what? We trusted our neighbors. We were not so wary. I mean, of especially, everybody. but this was New York City. Yeah, but we, New York City to us was like small neighborhoods. It was a very, very different place now. And, and I mean, your um, baby would have been swept off the street well, now. Well, we probably would have been arrested. I think something yeah. like that recently happened. Yeah, you uh, can't do that. Exactly. But I'm just saying that was something that we just didn't even think about. Nobody thought of these bad things. We were having good times. Uh, the the girls we would we would walk all afternoon and and sit down on it. What do you guys Central talk Park. about? Probably the children. Probably right. why they didn't sleep during the night and you weren't having any sex. I am probably that was really the topic of conversation. I'm sure. Right. I was actually wondering this because now I feel like we, t- me and my friends and everyone really talk so yeah. openly about their sex lives. Like it. I don't think it was quite like that. That was it as well normal? between really good friends. Yeah, you it probably, always was. It, you probably had a conversation. You probably had a conversation. It wasn't as in detailed as as you do today. But we, I know. feel like now it's so detailed. Like I know the penis size of my friend's boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like, well, you, I don't think you got like no, that. No, we did not discuss that. That was a personal thing. We we kept some of that private. Right, right. But I have to tell you, a lot of the problems were that half of the girls that I was very friendly with at the time all got divorced because i think what happened more importantly in this in the late 60s early 70s was that women like didn't want to have the roles of what uh, Mm -hmm. we're now talking about why couldn't you do that married they want because they felt they were stifled that their careers were being stifled that they were being frustrated they already have the kids they can't drop the kids they they had developed careers. They sometimes left the kids with the husbands. They sometimes uh, felt that the marriage. Wait, wasn't... I'm also so confused that you say you were friends like this because all of my friends, your friends that I've ever met, are all have been married forever. So where are these divorced friends? Well, they were the ones we just stopped seeing. Oh, so you you're know, just no you, longer friends. You couldn't continue relationships with in single those people. Days, really, with single people, that's it just so didn't different. Work. It just obviously. didn't work because uh, you had nothing basically in common, and they didn't want to. Have Hang out with married couples. That was something that was very threatening to them, mm. and th- vice versa. Sometimes I don't. Re- I actually like meeting my friends' significant others, but sometimes I feel like it's hard 
to maintain the same sort of relationship with them as it is with your other friends who are single. So it's the same thing. It's basically the same thing because your common interests really are no longer the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like when you... Or grad- it's like you can't leave your boyfriend on a Saturday night necessarily. No, and you shouldn't, nor should you. I mean, you know, if you've got a relationship with somebody, you don't say, oh, now I'm going to go out and see the girls. And no, that just I think doesn't that work. It kind of does. Like people have girls nights, Saturday night. Yeah, I don't think it's right. Really? Nope. I think it's wrong. No girls night? No girls no night. No GNO? No. No. Go out for lunch. Really? Yep. Why? Because nighttime, it's like you're going to bars, you're meeting other people. Like what's the difference between lunch and dinner? I, I just don't think it's a, a problem. What, are you gonna, what, is your, what is your mate supposed to be doing like you're when not, you're out having, uh, going out with your girlfriends? But what if you want, they have boys night. Well, if they, if they both, if the nights are the same and they have guys night and you have girls I feel night, like that's fine. you can kind of coordinate yeah, that. Yeah, you probably could. Because, like, at night, to, like, let's say you want to have a drinks, like, you want to have wine night with your girlfriends. You're not doing that for lunch. You're not drinking in the day. I don't know. I, you know what? That wouldn't be part of anything that I would even be interested in doing. Girls night? Yep. I have enough girls during the day. I don't need any more girls at night. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to go out with my husband and go have a lovely dinner. Wait, does Poppy ever have boys night? Never. <laughs> Never. Well, I guess they do. They'll do like boys golf. No, oh, that's during the day. Yeah. Right. I mean, so after like five p.m. When I turn my phone off at five o'clock, business is over, and that's it. And then I can't it's, believe it's you turn your time. phone off at five. It's o'clock. It's enough. It's enough. I have nothing to say to anybody after five o'clock if they haven't spoken to me before five. Unless it's a medical emergency, I don't want to hear from you. That's too early. I would make the rule nine o'clock. No, nine o'clock. I'm I'm busy. Like before bed. <laughs> That's busy. I'm busy. What are you doing? I'm I'm busy. I'm okay. busy. I'm not telling you what I'm doing, but I'm busy. So no boys' night for pop. What do you think Poppy talks about with his friends? Probably his golf scores, or business. They, see, the men love but like to talk social, about business. They don't, that's their social conversation, talking well, about business? they're not looking for women. <laughs> they're 70 and 80-year-olds. What are they, they're not looking to run around. You don't think they talk about their wives? I don't, I don't think so. Really? I really don't. Not a, maybe, maybe if you're 40 and, or even in your early 50s or 30s, you might complain. Right, because like, what is there to really, there's nothing new. When you're 80, like, it's like... It's not going to be like, oh, she did this. I had no idea she was like this. It's like you've known them forever. Exactly. So what are you going to talk about? There's no surprises. There's no surprises. There's no surprises like that. But you should be having fun. There should be yeah. things that you're, you're enjoying together. But those those other things that you experience when you're 20s and no longer you're experiencing when you're 80. Well, I feel like I learned – I don't think I learned anything about being a housewife. I'm, I'm now I'm more anxious that I don't know how to iron. Well, the truth is you don't have to worry. You're not even in stage one. True. So like, just boy, have like, a good need- time. So go have good a good time and and don't worry about that. You have to worry about being a uh, housewife, uh, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if it's called. First, housewife I need to anymore. go on a few dates. Then I need to get a boyfriend. Then we need to move in together. Like this is like a yes. Is- I think you're several years away from worrying about what we're talking about today. Okay, let's get to some listener questions. Someone wrote in, "What is your fantasy best dates?" So your ideal date, Grandma, and then mine as well. Oh, I don't know if I'd have uh, my ideal date would probably be sitting, facing the ocean, sipping uh, a Bellini. And you love your Bellinis. I love my Bellinis, but and only fresh peach juice. Exactly, and probably just having a bowl of pasta and uh, talking with somebody that I could look in their eyes and say I love you oh that's nice that's your idea like if you could have anything in the whole world that's what you would do yeah probably maybe it would be on the uh, in Venice looking out right. over the Grand Canal but that would be almost a, a complete fantasy yeah but I feel like that's what the question is like if I'm doing fantasy date I'm starting the day in Paris we're walking around we're going to a bistro or something then I'm flying to Disney World and we're doing like rides during the day, then flying back to New York City, seeing the city as we're going in. Like that's a great view. And then doing like a dinner there with friends and family. Like that's an ideal date. That is a great date. <laughs> Close off. You can't get a better date than that. Uh, another question someone wrote in. Uh, oh, this is good. So is it ever a good idea to complain to your family about your significant other or is it doomed? 
I don't think it's a good idea at all to air out any uh, of your dirty wash in it to your family unless it's really, I, really serious. But I feel like I do that to you on every single date. Well, that's a date. Well, I thought you were talking about a serious relationship. Um, I guess either. I mean, should you be putting a bad taste in your family and friends' mouth about a person when well, it's I really not something so serious, you well, know? No, I don't think if it's not a serious relationship and you're really moving in together and, and going to get engaged or get married, I think it's just a date and they're good dates and bad dates and don't bring it home. It's, but I do think sometimes it's such a bad date that you just want to voice your uh, your questions to your family and say, oh, is this really as bad as I think it is? Right. And if they say yes, then you know it's be you're reconfirmed in your thinking. But I hate when friends and family are like, this is bad, this is not your person, because it's like, I don't know, sometimes you're not giving a full idea of a person and then your family already hates them before it's even. Well, you know, I don't, I don't, think uh, people are that narrow-minded and and you're certainly old enough not to uh, be petty about your uh, complaints uh, but if it's a serious problem then your family needs to be uh, on on board and if it's not a serious problem handle it yourself uh, lastly someone wrote in how long should it take for their for your boyfriend or girlfriend to say I love you well, that's very personal. Some people could say it after the first date. That's too early. Don't you? That's not love. No, that's lust. No, or that's it infatuation. Could be whatever. It could be whatever, and that could last for a lifetime. If you went on a first date with someone after they said, I love you, wouldn't you be like, what the fuck? Get out of here, psychopath. No. Yes, you I would. Wouldn't. I yes, would you say would. that's beautiful. That's not true. If I came home and I said, I had dinner with this guy, and he was like, I love you, you would be like, get out. I would say, take it slow. I wanted to end the episode with something we haven't done yet. Um, we both love watching 50s movies together, especially romantic comedies, musicals. And we wanted to share with our viewers because I know a lot of my friends don't watch 50s movies and don't listen to 50s music, which I do all the time. And so do you, Grandma. So we wanted to give some recommendations to our listeners. Our 50s movie recommendation of the week is Pillow Talk with Doris Day and Rock Hudson. It's cute. It's a classic. You guys should watch and write in and let us know what you think. You really enjoy it, and it's fantasy at its best. So that was another episode of Excuse My Grandma. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Excuse My Grandma or email us any of your questions, excuse my grandma at gmail.com. Sign up for our newsletter, excuse my grandma podcast.com. Oh, and you can also follow me, my personal, at Kim Merstein, K-I-M-M-U-R-S-T-E-I-N. And remember, it's free. You remembered your classic line this time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.